Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. I've been away for a while, but now I'm ready to get back into it. And today we're going to be talking about the upcoming event that was finally announced as we continue to wait for anniversary. It's the main interlude, the Tokugawa Restoration Labyrinth Ukiyo release celebration campaign. So that's going to be today's video. Let's go right into it. In terms of the event itself, it starts on the 20th, uh, as you can see right here. It will go from the 20th and then it will go for the 27th. This is just the campaign period and uh, this is what it's going to entail in here. I'm going to be using this for the time being until I need to go to the other site. Uh, just because it's easier to read off of it. <laughs> so, and actually it actually has the dates at the moment. We'll be holding the main early Tokugawa Restoration Lambert of Ukiyo release celebration campaign. Going from the 20th to the 27th, Main Interlude, Unlock Main Interlude, Tokugawa Restoration Labyrinth will be permanently added to the Exchange Bear Mana Prisms in the Da Vinci uh, Workshop. It'll become exchangeable for free once you meet the quest to unlock requirements. In addition, a tri quest will be unlockable for free, and new interludes will be added for related servants. Uh, Tokugawa, so if you don't know, main interludes are basically a way to experience stuff again. For example, this is the, um, it's basically for events in the past, and this is the event for Kama, which becomes pretty important, because it turns out Kama is pretty important to the overall story, and this is also where some other stuff is revealed as well. <laughs> so, it's kind of a good idea to have this available to you at any given time and do it. Um, so the unlock requirements, masters who have meet the following requirements will be eligible to exchange for free. Clear part, uh, part two, part three, lost belt three, the synchronization, intellect, uh, nation, sin, the crimson beauty under the moon, aka just lost belt three. Clear the final act of the main interlude, the abyssal cyber paradise seraph. The requirement will also be met if you have cleared the final act of your special event revival, abyssal cyber paradise seraph, second ballet, or main interlude, abyssal cyber paradise seraph. It will not be necessary to clear pseudo singularities one through four at all for it. And the date they're adding this is on the 20th. New item permit. We already know it's the main interlude of the Ukiyo. Tombs in the main Uki of the Ukiyo. It's very similar to the event, but without any way to like do free uh, free quest in it. And it also is going to give um, a lot of items similar to the way the event was. This event was also very good for Saint Quartz. I believe there are 36 Saint Quartz, if I remember correctly that are inside this event itself, so the story is good and it's also worth doing. <laughs> in terms of the command codes that are in it, it's going to be the returning of these, which is the nun with the Buddha, Buddha Vista's Merciful Gaze. If you already have it, then you get this just changes into a rare mana prism. Spirit of Love and Wisdom, if you don't, if you already have it, it changes into 200 mana prisms. And then finally, Faint Black Delusional Command Seal. Um, which will turn into 100 if you already have it. And if you don't have any of them, you just get them. Hooray! Um, and then the trial quest, which will be unlockable for free when you clear Lost Spell number 3. There's the one for Bravati for when she showed up. A new interlude is added to for Sherazade, which is going to have one that's going to be worth 2 Saint Quartz. Um... Uh, in addition, during the main interlude, and during this period, you'll be able to do Sherazade's interlude will unlockable even if you do not own a copy of her at all. So that's very nice. Uh, take advantage of this uh, opportunity to clear Sherazade's Night of the Casters interlude. I believe you can do both of them, and it's worth doing the first one for sure. I don't know about the second one; it's going to be worth doing because it's two Saint Quartz. But that first Shirazade interlude is very, very good. They had to do it in order to save Shirazade's characters from the JP fanbase because they hated her after Agartha for many reasons that feel very silly to even mention anymore. <laughs> but it was, uh, they had to kind of walk it back a whole bunch. A lot of, a lot of people on JP did not like Agartha very much. <laughs> and to be fair, some people on NA also didn't really appreciate the story anyway. Anyway! Continue on here, uh, interludes for, yeah, they're talking about here about this one will be unlockable. So you'll be able to do that one, and then this one, and then to actually the limited time unlock requirements. This one you'll have to actually clear a pseudo singularity too if you want it. And I think you have to clear this one before you can get this one. And you can do this without Sherazade, and I suggest doing it because it's a really good one. And then there will be a pickup summons, which will feature, uh, Kama, Parvati, and... 
at Sherz uh, Sherzade is on this as well. I was about to say no, I missed uh, Sherzade. Kama, Sherzade, uh, Kiara, and Parvati. That's the order of it. For some reason, I saw Parvati. I was like, it skipped it immediately. Um, but yeah, he will be the pickups starting from day one. It will be Kama's going to be on it. Sherzade will start from the first, twenty first. Then starting from the 22nd, that's when Kiara is going to show up. And in terms of how long the banner lasts, uh, Kama is here until the 25th, Shirazade is here until the 26th, and Kiara leaves on the 27th. Uh, I'll go over the actual units themselves pretty soon, but I'll say right now because we are um, pretty close to anniversary at this point. Not very far away. It is like, um, on Saturday, it will be one two weeks away so probably shouldn't summon on this but i will go over the units if you're interested in the units themselves but i will say Kamba is on i believe on a one in three chance of getting them off of a gssr kiara is a little bit diff more difficult and shirazadi is always free so this i feel unless you are looking for dupe copies of Kama, probably or you're not interested in going for that gssr with a one in three probably not a good idea to be summoning but i also really do like Kama. But anyway, let's go over the units themselves that will be on here. Let's start with... Oh, and Pravati is always on every banner. And there's also a very good solid uh, Lancer AoE unit for quick. So actually very good. Um, we'll start in order of the one I think most people will end up skipping. Which is going to be Sherazade, <laughs> even though I love her. Sherazade, caster. She has one quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill, which is Arabian Night Storyteller EX. Um... It gets that after an upgrade to Strengthening 2, which we already have on NA, because I know because mine has this one. Chance to reduce one enemy's MP gauge by one, increase on Arts performance for one turn, then charges MP gauge. 100% drain chance, 30% to Arts, and 30% to MP on a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is Bed Chambers of Survival, A+. Plus. Chance to charm all male enemies for one turn, and then increase on defense for two turns. 60% male chance of charm, and defense of 40% on a cooldown of 6. Uh, her third skill, after the interlude, is Counter Hero Tail EX. Grants self gut status for one time, five turns. Grants the party gut status, except for self one time, two turns. Revives with 500 HP, and reduces one king of attack for one turn. It's 3,000 HP, and it's a 50% debuff on kings um, on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Territory Creation A++. Her third skill has been is an Anti-Berserker Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is the off lala uh, lala wa -la -la No, I said that completely wrong. 1,001 Knights. <laughs> Anti-King Rank EX Arts Noble Phantasm, which is increased on MP damage by 20% for one turn. Activates first. Deals damage to all enemies, a 500% chance to reduce their debuff resistance by 50% for one turn, three turn for one time, three turns. Damage up is 600% uh, level one, and if you get her all the way to MP level five, it's 900%. And if she also, on her overcharge, deals extra damage to king enemies, which is 200% at level one. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 300%, and that is Sherazade. Like I said, for the most part, Sherazade is going to end up being pretty easily skippable for a lot of people. Because she is, one, an AoE caster, which I have always said on multiple videos that I think it's useful to have one, just in case. Um, but for most people, they don't like using them, but I'll say it regardless. Uh, and two is that she is a technically free-to-play unit in the sense that if they ever return back with a five-star ticket that lets you just pick one for free, you can just get Sherazade that way, and it's better to do that than to go for multiple... Then to go for the gacha, unless you are specifically looking to get Sherazade coins to get your Sherazade stronger. Now, what I will say now is that I also really like Sherazade. I've she has been my main one of my main caster units that I use with Castoria. She does a lot of damage. Um, she can very easily loop. It's not that hard, um, and she just absolutely shreds any kings. And there are a lot of kings in this game. Uh, she can also be used during challenge quests, which is pretty fun because she has an anti-king and also anti-male, which this sometimes will come up. Um, and she also has the ability to reduce their arts performance and, and reduce their MP gauge over one turn. No, it's not that. It's just a reduction of en own enemy's MP gauge, sorry. Uh, which can be very useful in a kind of tough fight, especially if you are fighting against a king. 
And yeah, I just really like her. The 200% really helps take over the damage of like, well, at least you're going to be doing a lot of extra damage if you are. Even if it is just one enemy, it's able to do a lot of damage. So I really do like Sherazade, and I do think she's a, a, um, a unit worth owning. I just don't think it's safe around anniversary time to do that. Um, unless you just absolutely care about um, Sherazade as a character, or you, you don't have Sherazade, or you're just looking for more specifically dupes for her. Because even though she is a unit that is always in every banner, it does not mean that she's actually easy to pull. Um, unless you're just like not looking to get her. It's really weird <coughs> with a lot of free SS, not free SSRs, but SSRs that are not limited. Like sometimes you'll just get multiples of them and then sometimes you'll just go years without going any of them. Like I have my waiver at MP4 and I remember there was one year where I just got a buttload of uh, unfeatured always there SSRs and then just it disappeared for a while. <laughs> And then there's others like Enkidu, which I have never received a single copy of them in the entire history that I've been playing the game since their release, which is pretty funny. But yeah, that's Sherazade. I think she is a very solid unit, a very good unit that you can use, but also it's anniversary time, so it's not the time to be summoning. But man, isn't she cool for her character reasons and not for any other reasons that I can think of, which is legit. I really do like that. That nearly really does help make her a better character. But also I think there's some other stuff that you can say about her that uh, gets lost in trying to talk about units because nobody thinks about units in that way. Anyway, Kiara, the next move unit. Uh, Kiara is an alter ego. She has one quick two arts, two buster. Her first skill is a clairvoyance beast D++ um, after she gets a strengthening. Reduces one enemy's debuff resistance for a single turn, reduces their arch resistance for one turn, and then charges MP gauge. It's 10% debuff resistance, 30% uh, arch resistance, and 50% NP on its cooldown of 6. Her second skill is after a strengthening. Thesis of a Still Heart reduces all enemies MP gauge by 1, removes their, deep, no, removes their buffs, excuse me, removes their debuffs would be silly. Reduce their defense for 3 turns, 30% defense down on a cooldown of 6. Third skill, Goddess Metamorphosis EX, grants self-invincibility for one turn, increase crit damage, MP generation rate, debuff resistance, and healing received for a single turn, and then a 500% chance to deal 3,000 damage without killing uh, to self. The crit damage is 50%, the MP rate is 50%, actually, and the debuff and the heal rate are all 50% on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Authority of the Beast D, Independent Manifestation E, Logos Eater, and Nega Saver A, which is important because this makes it so that she has Grant Self Attack Dam uh, Attack Advantage against the Ruler class, which is something that is actually worth keeping in mind because rulers can be a pain in the ass to deal with. Her third skill is an anti-ruler attack damage have to do, so she's just really here to just destroy any rulers that come her way. And her Noble Phantasm after a strengthening is the Amathaba Amidala Heaven's Hole. Paradise of Pleasure, the Womb Realm Mandala. It's a rank EX, anti-unit, Noble Phantasm. Arts hits three times. Ignore invincibility for one turn. Deal damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies. 600% on MP level 1 and MP level 5, it's 900%. And then recover own HP, 5,000 to charge level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 10,000. And that's Kiara. Um, yeah, the, the, funny enough, when Kiara released, she was not very good. Which is why they kept buffing her. <laughs> and they buffed her to the point where she's an extremely good unit now. Um, the only thing that really holds her back is the fact that she is in Alter Ego class. And sometimes with some weird team comps, it, Alter Egos are usually... if you, you can basically never do a specific fight that is a Saber's and writers because even though she'll have advantage over one of the classes she won't over the other one and that can kind of be a bummer and a legit suck but if you're not in a situation like that she ends up being an extremely um good unit if you're ever fighting against a ruler she's also extremely good against them i've used her whenever i've had to go against a ruler and even though she is an aoe unit who in theory shouldn't be doing that much damage she is still able to do a decent amount of damage her Noble Phantasm can be good in both offense and def not defense, but in, in terms of offense, it can be extremely good. The reason is, is that ignore invincibility uh, and ignore defensive buffs is an extremely good skill, and it 
doesn't really super show up on farming but it does show up a decent amount on any and certain challenging fights because there are certain fights where they'll just throw up constant invincibilities and you have to get through it or they'll have so much defense that you can't get through them and in that case you can just literally ignore them with kiara and get done with it and even then if you don't have the ability to use her noble phantasm you can just simply take away their buffs it's just that easy she is, and then this also reduces all enemies MP gauge by one, which is kind of an important thing to have. Not a lot of dudes have the ability to just outright say, if anyone here has NP, immediately give them to me, please. So I think she's an extremely good unit. Um, the problem is that I don't just, I just don't know if she's good enough to, to be like, hey, summer's on the horizon and so is anniversary. Um, if you really do like Kiara, and you are specifically interested in the Alter Ego version, not the Summer version, or any of the other upcoming units, it's probably worth summoning for. But if you're not, then obviously you could better just hold on to it. She ends up being a fantastic unit as we talk about the GSSR that's coming up. She ends up being a great unit that is on a GSSR that has a unit that you also badly want. And if you go specifically, man, I really want this unit, but I won't be sad if I get Kiara, if that makes sense to you. I think that ends up being the place, the best place that you can have for her. If you just super love her, then obviously go for it and I wish you the best. But uh, for the most part, I think that's the kind of the best place that she can be. Is a unit that you don't get when you're going for another unit. And you go, oh man, that's awesome on a GSSR. Because you won't, there's no way to be um, sad about getting Kiara on a GSSR. Unless you already have Kiara and you don't want him. I should also mention my Kiara is MP level 2. So maybe that is also uh, judged. Uh, I bring it up just because it's like, oh, I actually don't know how her damage is at MP level 1. So if any of the things I mentioned about her damage or anything doesn't work out for you and you have MP level 1, just know that I forgot to mention I have MP level 2. <laughs> anyway, that's Kiara. Next. Kama. And this is the final unit of the, these here. Kama is an assassin. She is two quick, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is Blessing of the Goddess B. Reduces one ally's at max HP by a thousand permanently. Overcharges their MP by one stage for one time, three turns. Recovers on HP. Heal up is 4,000 at, at cooldown of five. Her second skill is uh, Ananga, one without body EX. Grants self guts status for one time. Increases on attack for three turns. 2,000 HP, 30% attack, and cooldown of 6. Her third skill is the Marta Papayas, EX. Uh, charges on MP gauge, grants self-attack and defense advantage against Alter Ego classes for 3 turns. Deals 2 damage against, 2x damage against them in attack, and takes 0.5% uh, damage from them. Increases on critical damage by 20% for 3 turns, reduces all enemies, charm debuff resistance for a single turn. NP up is 50%, charm resistance is 40% on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are... Magic Resistance A, Writing A, uh, Independent Manifestation C, Love Goddess B. Her third skill is a Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude, and her Noble Phantasm is the Kama Samahana. A withering affection is not love, or if you get her to Sage 3, the name changes, but the effect stays the same. It is a Rank C Noble Phantasm Anti-Unit, hits 10 times, deals damage to one enemy, 80% chance to charm them for a single turn. The damage is 1,200 and MP level 1. If you have an ever MP level 5, that's 2,000. And then she also incre increases her quick, for quick performance for 3 turns. Activates first, 20% of charge level 1. If you get it to the final charge level, that is 40%. And that is Kama, uh, the Assassin, not to be confused with the Summer version. <clears throat> I know you're gonna be weirded out to hear this, but this is yet another good unit. <laughs> Weird that they would release good units before the anniversary as if to say, Hey, <laughs> we know. Wouldn't it be nice to own these? And the answer is yes, it is actually very nice to own comma. Similar to the other three, I actually own this unit as well. And I can tell you that I have used her exclusively as an anti-writer unit in terms of like, I need a single target destroyer. I'm bringing in Kama. Sometimes I do it against Berserkers. The only thing I don't bring her in is against Alter Egos because up until recently, I forgot that she did this to be 100% real with you. <laughs> this is a very nice ability to have. But I, I simply just forgot that she could do that. <laughs> the reason is, is that I've said it before is that sometimes a unit is so good that they do so many things at one time 
that you forget that they're doing that and then you're like wait this unit does this as well or this card does this as well that's dumb it was already good why does it also do this and that's what I feel about Kama having anti uh, alter ego for three turns uh, in terms of her other skills the ability to just give anyone an overcharge to their MP level is still very good and the fact that it lasts three turns is uh, kind of stinky but it's all right it also comes with a big debuff uh, and that kind of sucks because I feel like Kama was one of the first units to kind of give overcharge to dudes and now they've made the <laughs> now they made it so that they give it to them more easily with very little like debuff to them but I guess it does fit in character that Kama would reduce the allies HP by a thousand because it's Kama. Her second skill as you can see here grant solve gut status for one time. It just is infinite guts until they actually kill Kama this guts just stays now this can be good and bad it can be bad in the sense of like well if six turns pop up and you're like wait i want 30 percent attack up you can't do it yet because the guts doesn't stack it's the one thing if this guts could stack she would just never die because <laughs> you'd be able to put up your defenses instant over and over again the only way to kill her at that point was to for your enemy to completely remove all your debuffs and stuff like that so the one thing holding it back is the one thing that is also preventing it from being unbelievably broken, which is the fact that it is not stackable. But even though it is not stackable, that very rarely comes up and you're just happy to have infinite guts and you never have to worry about it. Um, very cool to have. This third skill, don't need to say much, this is also very good. It's very easy to charm lock your opponent. Um, I've done it before where even though this thing only lasts a single turn the reduce all enemies charm debuff resistance for a single turn and it's 40% I've still done three three turn clears with comma where it was literally just like they were charm locked the entire time and they never had a chance to escape it uh, It's pretty awesome <laughs> And that's Kama. Um, you don't need to need you don't need to hear it from me to know that she's good. I feel most people already know that Kama is good. Um, and for some people, it doesn't even matter because she is also Sakura. <laughs> well, not Sakura, but it's Sakura face. Well, not even a Sakura. Face. I mean, it's the body. Anyway, I'm gonna get pseudo servant. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Um. Now, is it worth it to go for it before anniversary? If you're someone who has been planning ahead, which I assume you are, if you are summoning on this banner, then you you know you already know the answer is is that you care enough about Kama that you allowed yourself enough Saint Quartz to be like I'm gonna give her some, and then the rest of this goes to Summer. You've already planned ahead. Best of luck to you. That's the right way of doing it. If you're anyone else though. It really, really depends on how much you want um, uh, the anniversary unit and the summer units. Because like I said, this year is three summer units. And then we have to deal with Archetype Earth. That is four SSR banners to go for. This is also assuming you don't want to summon on the man banner, which I believe this year it is Oberon. If No, it's not Oberon. It is... God damn, who was this year? Oberon's next year. Um... Knights of the Round Table? Is it really Knights of the Round Table is the male? It was that and Oberon for the next year. For next year? I mean this year, though. Who was the man? Doman. It's Doman. That's right. Okay. That's right. I always forget about Doman. Doman's a very good unit, though. <laughs> So you have to, it's, that's why I say where it's like, if you don't, if you haven't been preparing for it, I think it's better to just skip out and wait for another time. There will be more comma banners. I believe you can literally see when the next comma banner is down here. <clears throat> if I go down far enough. Uh, okay, oh, main release, Kanban, Lucky Bag, 8th Anniversary, Destiny Order, Summoning, oh, wait, GSSR. Paper Moon Summoning Campaign 2. She is going to be gone for a while, I guess. Hmm, but that does give you time to save up. You at least know when she's going to come up. And who knows if whether or not NA decides to put her on the Thanksgiving banner or something like that. Or they decide to release her earlier. It's also something to kind of plan ahead for and do stuff like that. But what I'm trying to say here is that Kame is a good unit. So if you do end up summoning for her, I don't blame you. Um, and also it is, like I said, soccer related. So if you're a big fan of her in general, I don't really blame you for summoning for that reason either. I just want you to be responsible with what you've got with anniversary 
being this close. If anything, you can probably just take the quartz that you would get from doing the main interlude Ukyo, and then you just use that for one multi uncommon and see if it works out or not. You know, you could always do that. Um, or you could just keep on saving. It's all up to you, man. I'm just here to tell you about these units, and that's it. And that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Um, some other ones should be coming up. I actually, funny enough, I already recorded another anniversary video where I was talking about Kaleidoscope and, um, Kaleidoscope and Black Grail. Uh, and right before when I was about to release the video, I realized, wait a minute, I have both of these. Wouldn't it be better if I just actually showed units that you did them and did the video that way to better show them off and be like, well, if you're undecided, because I think at this point, the only people who would really decide between that are people who are undecided. And I think it'd be better to actually show versus just say, but I don't know. If you made it this far, feel free to tell me about that. Maybe I'm overthinking it and maybe I can just do both or <laughs> maybe it's something like that. Um, who knows? Um, my work has also been really weird for lately. So if you've been enjoying Wokey Storytime, it will return soon. I just need to wait for a time where I'm not afraid that work will just randomly text me and send me an email saying, hey, that thing that we said would be due a week ago, it's actually due now. And yeah, know that, hey, we put this up to you last minute and we delayed it, but it actually has to be done right now. And for that reason, there hasn't been story time because story time takes a lot of my time. <laughs> And I can't just get it away. But don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I will get back to it. And pretty soon we're going to get into a long nothing period where I can probably put some up, stuff up there. But, you know, that's for future stuff. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out. Bye-bye. Uh,